so we are discussing a, a steady flow we do the mass balance and the energy balance of this uh, process mass balance and uh, energy balance what it does is actually, uh, as I said, it's a steady flow process. So once you derive or once you uh, develop an equation for the mass balance and the energy balance of a steady flow process, then that will allow you to consider the cases where uh, transient conditions are involved or unsteady process or time dependent changes are involved. So and, and, and here we discuss uh, we derive an equation for the mass balance and the energy balance for a steady flow process. A steady flow is one where you have a continuous flow of mass and the mass is flowing at a constant rate. So at, a, at any given time, the mass flow through that process will be constant. There is a, there is a, a, a no change in the rate of flow. There, there could be changes in the uh, volume because uh, if you compress the uh, so for example if you're transferring um, a gas uh, you could compress it or you could expand it which means you are changing the density and that will change the uh, the, the volume rate uh, but uh, the mass flow rate at any given time will be a uh, constant so uh, let's let's see how we can um, yeah, we can derive uh, um, uh, an equation for a steady flow process. Uh, what we what we have here is a, is a system uh, as shown here. Uh, you have a you have a, a a device. Let's call this a, a steady flow device. And uh, this is uh, this is your control volume here. So you have an inlet here. Uh, this is your inlet condition where you got uh, uh, you have the entrance into the system through this point, and uh, we call this as uh, state one. And uh, you have uh, an exit from here. So that is termed as two, and you've got a shaft. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm considering this as an engine and uh, a, a steady flow happening through an engine. So, <coughs> excuse me. There is a shaft which will provide you uh, a shaft work. Uh, suppose the shaft is rotating in this direction, so that will give you a shaft work. So what you have here is a shaft work. And for an engine, you will need to give uh, some sort of heat energy input into the system. So uh, it could be uh, using uh, a fuel, which is uh, given as an input here. Uh, uh, you could you could also give a heat source, uh, a heat from another source. Uh, so there is a heat input to the system and a, a shaft work output. Now, the equation for uh, such a system or the complete uh, balance of uh, mass balance of such a system will give you an equation like this L uh, consider the states one and two you will have a uh, mass flow at one or conservation of mass rate entering must equal the mass rate leaving so uh, that will give you w1 if w is the mass one and w2 it will be equal to w2 you can also also calculate the mass if you know the area the volume flow and uh, the the specific volume so you can also write a1 v1 over v1 is equal to a2 v2 over v2 where a is equal to area v is equal to velocity and uh, small letter v is equal to specific volume this is meter squared this is meter per second and uh, specific volume is meter cube per kilogram 
So if you know these quantities, you can you can you can uh, write the equation for mass balance. Let's call this equation one. So that give you the the mass balance of uh, this uh, energy system. Now, for the energy balance, um, I'm I'm starting from. Uh, the end actually in here I'm starting from the final equation here so that will be easy for you to understand the final equation for energy balance give you h1 plus v1 squared by 2 or v1 squared over 2 plus z1 g plus dq over dm is equal to h2 plus v2 square over 2 plus z2 g plus dw over d now you might know that h is enthalpy h is enthalpy h equal to internal energy plus the product of pressure and volume uh, v is velocity again this is the capital v here so velocity z is the datum i have shown the datum lines on this the the uh, the distance from the datum line to entrance and exit are uh, uh, um, notated as z1 and z2 respectively and uh, you have g which is the gravitational uh, constant uh, q is the heat input or output m is the mass or per per mass again h is enthalpy velocity z2 is the datum at exit point at 2 and g is the gravitational constant dw is the work so this is heat per mass this is work per mass now i always tend to understand these equations using uh, units you may get puzzled why you need to use the units what is the unit of this entire equation how do you find it the easiest thing is to look for familiar terms you know velocity velocity is meter per second so if this term is used in the equation then the entire unit of this equation should be same as that of this term and because v1 square v1 is velocity so v1 squared is will be equal to v1 squared is equal to meter squared per second squared so that will be the uh, the unit of this entire equation v1 squared is meter squared per second square and therefore this should be the equation or uh, sorry the the unit for the entire equation here and this is your steady flow energy equation or the energy balance for a steady flow process now let's see uh, if we can understand each of these terms and let's see if this uh, this uh, uh, unit make any sense how do you uh, know this is a v1 squared and how can you uh, say for example dq q is a heat now you have a you have a inlet here you have an inlet entering entering mass so you have a velocity here and that term is used um, here and uh, you have uh, uh, a gas entering here so the gas will have uh, internal energy pressure and volume etc so you will have an enthalpy for the entering gas and that is given here and uh, you also have uh, a datum energy or a potential energy based on uh, the datum of the entering state and that is given uh, using this this datum point or this this datum line and that quantity is 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 given here now you have uh, another input into the system depending on what type what depending on the type of your system that you may have uh, a heat input to the system and uh, that quantity is uh, shown here now you will have all the all these three quantities like at exit condition as well you will have uh, a mass leaving here or a gas leaving from the system so you will have uh, uh, internal energy and the pressure and volume condition so you will have enthalpy leaving from the system and uh, you also have a datum so you will have a, a datum energy or a potential energy here and you have a velocity leaving so you will have a kinetic energy leaving and you also have a shaft work so you have a work output from the system and that those conditions are given at the exit so you have 
enthalpy leaving, velocity leaving and the datum energy or a potential energy and the work output from the shaft. So inlet conditions equal to outlet conditions that is your energy balance. Now how do we convert this? This is this is expressed per unit mass and that's where you have a term dm here. How uh, this 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 term can be expressed in meter per second meter square per second square? You say this is uh, this is uh, energy or heat and this is kilogram. So how is it how is it meter square plus per second square? Let's see how we can convert that. What what is it? It it is a heat per mass. So heat is joule. The energy uh, the unit of heat is joule. So that is joule per kilogram. Joule per kilogram and that is joule is newton meter so a newton meter per kilogram and that is newton is kilogram meter per second squared times this meter here over this kilogram so that will give you kilogram and kilogram cancelled these both are cancelled and that will give you meter squared per second squared that confirms the the total unit of the equation so that explains why dq over dm is a meter square per second square now how do you convert z1 g to meter square per second square that's 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 pretty much simple because you have a uh, Z1 is a meter quantity and G is meter per second squared. So you have meter squared per second squared. And you know V1 squared by 2 is, is the same thing. But there is a confusion. What is the unit of enthalpy? Enthalpy is joule per kilogram again. So you have converted that joule per joule joule per kilogram here to meter square per second square so you know enthalpy has got the same unit as heat per mass now you have one more term that is work per mass again heat and work have got the same unit which is joule and therefore work per mass will be same as that of this one which is joule per kilogram and therefore that also equates to meter squared per second squared so I, 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 th I think this explains uh, the the concept every bit be a little bit better uh, that uh, you can uh, you can explain uh, uh, using the energy balance and uh, the mass balance equations You, you you need to understand this this equation completely in order to, in order for you to solve any problems uh, you, uh, for uh, uh, the the uh, steady uh, any problems that involve uh, a steady flow uh, process. Once again, thank you for watching. Any any doubts or any any comments, please comment on the video or or send me an email. Thanks thanks for watching.